just for a little bit of context, Sarah, I, I just want to note, as you mentioned, the U.S. does not currently have the capability to send folks into space right now. We rely on the Russians to do this. So this program and the astronauts we're now sitting down to speak to represent the first time we're able to do this starting next year. That's when the target dates are um, since 2011. So thank you so much for joining us today and congratulations uh, on the news that you will be the first. I want to start with you, Chris Ferguson, because not only were you the last space shuttle commander, commander back in 2011, you worked for Boeing. Uh, you've been very closely involved in developing Boeing Starliner spacecraft uh, for their part of the program. Did you ever think that you'd be going back to space on a commercial mission as the first ever private citizen? Hey, thanks, Morgan. Uh, well, I'll tell you, when we finished up the shuttle program about seven years ago, uh, I thought my flying in space days were certainly over. Uh, of course, uh, Boeing brought me into their fold shortly after that and, uh, and interested me in, in uh, developing our, uh, our next uh, way to low Earth orbit. So ever since then, I've been a part of the team, and uh, now it's come full circle and uh, have an opportunity to fly it. Really excited about it, Brent. Thank or Morgan, thank you. And I, I think, Chris, one of the key things here is that in the past, the rockets have always been developed and operated by NASA, owned by NASA. Now it's being done by Boeing and SpaceX. It's the private sector. It's a very interesting twist. Uh, and I believe it's important that, uh, that we convey that um, we're now providing a commercial service to low Earth orbit that, of course, uh, our we flagship customer is NASA. Uh, but that if we build it, will they come? Where uh, will other customers come from other places, perhaps space tourism, perhaps other countries that are interested in space programs of their own? And Robert and Doug, you're going to be the Crew Dragon test flight astronauts for SpaceX. Uh, now, SpaceX has logged quite a number of records, milestones, but in terms of U.S. activity in space, it's still relatively new to the game. What's it like to work with this company? Uh, it's it's exciting. Uh, it's a fairly young workforce. Uh, so Bob and I are two of the older folks out there when we go out to work with them. But uh, there's a lot of energy out there. There's a lot of smart people uh, that are working very hard to get uh, the human spaceflight side of things uh, into orbit. You know, they've been working with uh, NASA uh, and they provide uh, cargo services for the International Space Station. And they've been doing that for the last several years. And uh, this is kind of a next logical step for them as a company as well. Uh, Bob Pisani here. I'll just throw that to any, uh, any one of you gentlemen. Uh, first, thank you for making uh, space flights exciting as a boy who grew up in the 60s. Um, I am so happy uh, that this is in the news again. You're all making us very proud. Uh, there, we make a big thing about you fellows as a commercial crew program. I'm wondering if there's a difference between all of and women as well, if there's a difference between the commercial aspects of this and the old, the old NASA program. Was your training different in any way? How is commercial different from what we were doing in the 70s and 80s and 90s with the NASA program? 70s and 80s and 90s with the NASA program. I think I would say that uh, kind of the big difference that we've seen, Bob, and great name, by the way, uh, that we've seen is that we really are leveraging technology that's used for our kind of commercial applications, the launch of satellites in SpaceX's case, making some minor modifications to hopefully imp improve the reliability of their vehicle. And then that reliable vehicle, then they'll continue to use on the commercial side. And so that's, that's the, probably the biggest piece for me is that it's not like the space shuttle where every piece, the external tank, the solid rocket boosters, the shuttle itself, were all NASA unique hardware for a NASA unique mission. We're, we're able to leverage quite a bit of technology from the commercial sector, uh, and that makes a big difference in terms of being able to fly often enough to have confidence in the reliability that we should expect. Now, we're going to put up a picture on our screen. It's going to be of the American flag that was affixed to the International Space Station back in 2011 uh, on that last space shuttle mission that, uh, Chris, I, I know you were on. I think the whole idea here, legend has it, that that's going to be retrieved by the astronaut that goes up again in a U.S.-made vehicle, which, as we know from this program, is expected to be next year. Which one of you is going to capture the flag? That's a great question, Morgan. Of course, Doug <laughs> Hurley uh, on the other end, he and I flew together on STS-135. Uh, so I, I, I suppose it's a bit of a friendly race. Um, and, you know, just as an aside, uh, we had the opportunity just before this uh, broadcast to uh, speak to Ricky Arnold, 
who was uh, who's the astronaut on the International Space Station now, who actually found the flag. I think it had been hiding in a Christmas decoration box somewhere along the line. Uh, but uh, hey, whoever gets there, we're going to do it safely, and uh, we're going to bring it home and make America proud. Well, thank you so much for taking the time today. I want to say to all of you, thank you for your service to this country, and good luck as you train and get ready for your missions. The new astronauts of the NASA Commercial Crew Program.